Welcome back to Islander Basketball here on KDF 47. This is Chris Six Sports Production and, of course, on the Islanders Digital Network powered by AP Texas. I'm Stephen King. We come to you from the American Bank Center. Final introductions. Action to come underway just in a moment. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. This is a big game today. The Islanders and the Abilene Christian Wildcats. AM Corpus Christi coming in 6-8, and eight, tied for 8th position in the Southern Conference standings. Looking again, as I mentioned just moments ago, trying to stay in that conversation. Wanted to be in that Southern Conference seating position. For ACU, they are currently in third place in the Southern Conference, coming in at 9-4. and four. And as I mentioned previously also, they did defeat the Islanders back on January 11th. Uh, Tony Lewis had a double-double on that night, 12 points, 10 boards, his second career double-double. The interesting thing is Tony's not in the starting lineup tonight. Let's get you those starters. First from the uh, Abilene Christian Wildcats, number one, Reggie Miller, a six-foot junior guard. Number five, Peyton Ricks. Ricks, one of the best players in the league, number third in steals, number three in steals per game, number five in free throw percentage, three in three-point percentage. He can absolutely launch the senior. Corian Mason, six-foot junior transfer out of Oklahoma City. Joe Pledgen, six-foot eight, 220 sophomore out of Overland Park, Kansas. And Clay Gaiman, six-foot six, 220-pound sophomore out of Nevada, uh, Missouri. Joe Golding, the head coach in his ninth season with the Wildcats. And for your Islanders in the starting lineup, Miles Smith out of Spring, Texas, a six-foot junior guard. Jordan Hairston, freshman six-foot out of Centerville, Virginia. a and Corpus Christi with an error to start with as I think the Islanders almost tipped it out of bounds. Hairston threw it back under the bucket. And it was ACU, the first one to it. They got the lay-in. Jay Sean Talton Thomas also in the starting line at the 6'5", senior out of Oklahoma City. Perry Francois getting the nod today. His first start of the year. 6'8", 240 pounds out of North Miami, Florida. And finally, Nolan Bertain back in the starting line of 6'4", 185-pound junior transfer. Came from UAB before landing here on the island. And there's going to be an offensive foul on Jordan Harrison. Pushing off with the left arm as he drove baseline. Tried to create the space. It's one thing if you hold it, but he definitely extended. Willis Wilson, the head coach, of course, in his ninth season with the Islanders. On the verge of becoming the all-time winningest Islander head coach, tied currently with Ronnie Arrow. Officials, just a quick little congregation. I'm not sure what that was about. Seemed like relatively obvious what was going on on the floor. 2-0 Wildcats. Throwing it away, Pleasant, does he catch up with it? No, he does not. So, ACU with the turnover. Reggie Miller, the errant feed. Honors look to tie things up. On the handoff to Bertain, almost taken away by Ricks. Ricks is one of the best in the business, stealing the basketball, not only in the conference, but in the country. And on the left-hand feed, Perry Francois unable to disengage from the low post. And Willis Wilson talking to Jay Sean Talton Thomas saying, you need to go further to the corner to create a better passing angle. So a little bit sloppy early, a turnover just a moment ago from ACU. The Islanders answer with one of their own. Miller defended by Miles Smith, up top through Gaiman. Gaiman can't get it, a nice, nice defense by Nolan Bertain taking away that passing lane on the top. On the switch, Bertain now on Gaiman in the low post. Pleasant, looking high-low, couldn't get it. Francois, nice help, pulls the trigger on the short jumper, well off the mark. Jay Sean Talton Thomas secures the board. Bertain. Jay Sean, a little step back, won't go, long board, Nolan Bertain. Quickly across to Miles Smith. Off the window and good. So the offensive rebound by Bertain. As ACU started going up the floor, the Islanders caught them in that little mini transition, and Miles Smith able to get to the rim, 2-2 the score. Gaiman, up faking. Gaiman got some size. Nice up fake. That was, that was nice. Perry Francois came over late, tried to get a piece of it, but that up and step through was nice by Clay Gaiman. 4-2. Going back door, Hairston, nothing there yet. Islanders will wait. Rick's late. He, you saw Rick's face just like, ah, he knows he should have gotten in that passing lane a little bit sooner. Not the case. Skip across to Hairston. Nice little, little uh, tap back out by Perry Francois. And the Islanders look to set. Francois caught in a double. Now they go single against Pleasant. 
with the left hand, doesn't get the call, doesn't get the bucket to fall. Gaiman with the rebound. Up faking. Gaiman will shoot threes. Kick out. Off the mark. Pleasant over the back. Oh, they're going to say it's on Miles Smith getting intertwined with Joe Pleasant. Said he got. Not sure what they're. Oh, it's getting a uniform reset. The stoppage. Shot clock reset to 20, 4-2 Wildcats early. 17-15 remaining. Miller has it, looking for Pleasant. Miller knocked away just, just for the moment. No possession change. Gaiman has to give it up. Miller's going to launch the three. That's going to be off the mark. And a rebound, Islanders. So nicely done. Miles Smith finds Jay Sean. Gives it up, Miles Smith, three ball, that's nicely done. Got into the lane, drew in the D, kicked it to the corner. Islanders take the one point advantage, 5-4. Pleasant up against Francois. Francois taking away some, and there's gonna be a foul on, on, on Perry, and Pleasant able to finish with that left hand. He turned it back to the middle of the lane. Francois on the recovery, got him with the body. But kudos to Joe Pleasant that he was able to finish with the left hand. Colton Cole's going to come on. Seven foot, 240 pound junior out of San Angelo. Also coming in. Number four, Damian Daniels. Daniels, number one on the Southland Conference in assist to turnover ratio at a 2.0. So Cole, Daniels, Pleasant. Mason and Ricks on for ACU. Wildcats up one, six, five. They'll move it to two. 7-5 the count. And Pledgen checks out. They'll bring on the big fella. Arion Simmons, 6'5", 264 pounds, a freshman. Loves to throw the body around. Miles Smith over the timeline up against Daniels. Finds Thomas. Talton Thomas, that is. Jay Sean. Up against Simmons, needs some help. Spins. He'll go to the free throw line as Simmons kind of got out of position as he wrapped around as Jay Sean turned to the hole. He had the open look. Simmons tried to recommit to the play, but got him over the top. 7-5, Jay Sean Talton Thomas shooting two free, show, free throws. That's off the mark for Jay Sean. You can see it out of the hand that it was sliding a little bit right. 74% free throw shooter on the season, 71% in conference play. Second one looked much stronger. One point contest, 7 6 Wildcats. Daniels. Not a score. Skips it over. Simmons. He'll shoot and he'll make. Arian Simmons also has made about nine threes this year. So you've got to respect his mid range game. And there's going to be a foul, I believe, away from the basketball coming up. I think Jordan Hairston was held, if I'm not mistaken, by Corian Mason. 9 6 the score. Timeout on the floor. Islanders trail by three to the Wildcats of. Abilene Christian, Southland Conference Basketball here at the American Bank Center on this Saturday afternoon. This doubleheader. Stay with us. More to come on the Islander Digital Network Power by AP Texas and on KDF 47, this Chris Six Sports production.
Welcome back to Islander Basketball. and m Corpus Christi with three early turnovers. And buried only one for ACU. Islander shooting 40% from the floor, 57% for ACU, four of seven. The three turnovers I point out, one of them a steal by Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian, number 13 in the nation in Division I in total steals. It is their forte. So Islanders have got to be very careful with the basketball. Peyton Ricks, the leading scorer, coming in 13.9 points per game, followed by Joe Pleasance, 11.5. Up in the conference games, about a point and a half, he's at 13. Miles Smith with the basketball, defended by Daniel Smith. And there's, oh, they're going to call it an illegal screen on Perry Francois, and Joe and Tony Lewis is going to come on because that's number two quickly on Perry. So Tony will check in, the six foot 11 senior out of San Antonio. I did not see the play well enough if, if he was not driven deeply into the screen, but definitely got hit with the hip. Cole wanted it. Tony Lewis did a nice job fronting the seven footer. Ricks up top to Simmons. In deep now Cole with it. With the left hand finish. Rolls it through. 11-6 the score. Cole going to the left hand, drops it down. Tony Lewis. Picks up his dribble, gets it back out. They'll work it. To Miles Smith. Kick around to, J to, to Jordan Hairston. Nice little rhythm dribble. Getting away from the defender. Knocks down the J. It's a two-point shot, though. 11-8 the count. Hairston definitely a contender for freshman of the year in the Southland Conference. And Jay Sean kind of fell back a bit as Damian Daniels went into the lane, tried to recover towards the block, but Daniels able to slip it in off the window. Oh, missed him on the turn as Hairston went back door, but Miles Smith had already turned his head the opposite direction. Jay Sean trying to get by Simmons and he gets the call. That's gonna be number two. So Simmons, it's a bad matchup for Arion Simmons with the quick feed of Jay Sean Talton Thomas. He's gonna check out with two. But that'll bring on Joe Pleasant, also coming in as Trey Lennox. Lennox number 14 out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. He has made four of 16 threes in conference play. Two of them came against the Islanders in the second half of that contest in Abilene. And they were huge makes for ACU at those, at those times during the game. Jordan Hairston knew what to do when he caught it. Beautiful screen, Tony Lewis freeing up as Lennox went to the deck and Jordan Harrison on the catch and shoot gets it up fast. Back to two, 13-11, in deep. Cole misses that one and there'll be a foul. Way after. The call came so late after the play that the, the, the rebound was already in the hands. Whether it was the right call might have been, but it's just the timeliness of the whistle so late. 13-11. Urshot Hunt, Iggy Hunt looking to check in for the Islanders. And Cole misses the first. Probably coming on for Jay Sean, if I'm not mistaken. That should be the case. That is it. On for Jay Sean Talton Thomas. Iggy Hunt out of Toronto, Ontario. Six foot eight, 215 pound senior. 17 blocks in the season. Trailing only Elijah Schmidt's 19. Elijah, though. Well, Iggy's playing about 12 minutes a game. Elijah, 20 minutes a game. Iggy's game against McNeese and Shamarcus Kennedy was so impressive. Peyton Smith picks up the dribble, gives it up to the wing. Iggy Hunt wants to go to Tony Lewis. Finally gets the hook feed. The double goes away. Tony up against Cole. Kick out for Harrison. Up for three again. That's going to be just off to the right. And Tony Lewis, oh, almost. Great effort, though, on the hustle. But just tried to throw it to some open space. Nobody home, unfortunately. 14-11. Wildcats by three. Daniels. Looking for the high screen from Coles. Actually got Pleasant on the far side. Trying to free up Ricks. And, and Jordan Hairston challenged him as soon as he got it. Ricks kind of makes a living of getting fouled at three. For Harrison, that's number two. Yeah. 
Ricks. Got to play sound and solid. Javay Lampkins looking to come on for the Islanders. He'll come on for Harrison. But it is a three-shot foul, and Ricks, like I said before, one of the better free-throw shooters in the conference, without a doubt. And it's tough getting Harrison off because he's got such the capability of scoring at a whim. 85% of the season, 81% in conference play. Ricks, and he knocks down all three. You will see on numerous occasions this season where he has been fouled in a three-point shot. Sometimes it's due to that, that kick of his right leg. That time Harrison just a bit aggressive. Iggy Hunt wants to go inside. Taken away by Ricks. Another turnover for AM Corpus Christi, leading to now this eight-point deficit. Turnovers crucial. Peyton Smith up against Trey Lennox. Hunt, strong to the rim, and he'll be fouled by Cole. Similar to, similar to the play on the opposite side, the whistle kind of coming a little bit late, but they are going to call it on Cole, his first, team fourth. Islanders with 16 fouls thus far. Iggy Hunt at the free throw line. Are they putting anybody underneath? Jave Lampkins is going to go under, just Jave Lampkins. Iggy hits that interesting style, never gets that rhythm dribble, has a little shake with his shoulders. Launches and makes. 62% of the season, but close to 74% in conference play. He's gotten better as the year has gone on. Cole checking out. Jalen White looks to check in for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Wide coming on for Miles Smith, getting his breather with 12.54 remaining. Jalen White, 6'5", 245 pounds. Big and strong. Iggy knocks down both. Needs some stops, first and foremost. Does Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Gaiman has come back on. Gaiman, Pleasant, Mason, Lennox, and Daniels. Pleasant trying to get by Iggy Hunt. Nothing there. Mason calling for the basketball now inside to Gaiman. Gaiman stepping out across the lane. Iggy Hunt coming in at the last minute, but just misses the swat. 21 to 13, Pleasant. White with the basketball. Up top. The Wildcats really doing strong business on that overplay. White in the face of Gaiman. He wants to drive, I promise you. Iggy's going to pull the trigger, deep three. That's off right and short. 21 to 13. Damon will give it up to Lennox. Mason. Block. Oh! By Tony Lewis. Tony picks up number two, and he had all ball on the top. Whether he, whether he got him with the body, I don't know, but definitely all ball on the top. 11.52 on the clock. We'll take a break. Second foul on Tony Lewis, two on Perry Francois. Elijah Schmidt will become out of the bench for the Islanders when we come back. 21-13 the score. Islanders trail the Wildcats of ACU on the Islanders Digital Network Power of AP Texas and on KDF 47. Twenty-one to thirteen, the score. Islanders trail the Wildcats here at the American Bank Center. Game two of our Islander doubleheader. Kudos to the Islander women for their victory 
earlier tonight. Earlier today, excuse me, 68-59 win over Abilene Christian. Great day, Alexis Bryant. Actually, a great day from the, the entire starting five. Four of the five finishing double figures. J.D. Evans, only Mons, uh, started to finish with double figures, but she had eight. It was just a solid performance, so kudos once again. Here in this contest, so for A&M Corpus Christi, one of the things that are, uh, uh, that are the issues is the five-to-one turnover ratio right now. Five turnovers for the Islanders compared to only one for Abilene Christian. Six to zero in points off of turnovers. The foul called on Tony Lewis. Does he stay on? He did not. So Iggy Hunt and Elijah Schmidt now has the assignments on the floor in the lane. They'll go up against Gaiman and Joe Pleasant. Makes the first foul shot, does Mason. So Mason, that's his first bucket. First point of the night. Two of two, 10 point lead. Honors inbound, there's full court pressure. Elijah Schmidt to go back to Peyton Smith. Needs to get up over the timeline. He does. Met at the top, lost it as he got caught in midair. Lennox will decide against and give it back up and ACU sets the lineup. Lennox. Barely got a fingertip on it, brought it back into control. Peyton Smith unable to make the jump for the steal. Game in on the top. Nice help. Down the lane, Mason, floater. It's good. Stepping out. Got, I don't know, it's got to be a little bit more secure with the basketball. Peyton Smith up against Daniels. Daniels kind of flailing a bit. Trying to get the attention of the official. Nothing there. 12-point deficit over Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Almost doubled up, 25-13. to 13. Lampkins, and there's going to be a bump on Mason. Lampkins definitely caught Mason coming forward. With that, that's going to be the 15 foul. Miles Smith looking to return for A&M Corpus Christi. He'll come on for Iggy Hunt. So I'm understood a little bit of a smaller lineup right now. Height-wise, of course, Jalen White bringing all that size at that small forward position. Miles Smith tries to skip it across, but it's taken away. Taken away by Abilene Christian on the deflection. Goes to the corner. Gaiman was able to secure. Gaiman up fake. Gets to the free throw line. Decides against. To Lennox stepping through. Good ball movement by Abilene Christian. Gaiman up faking. And he's going to get the flush as Jalen White got caught flat-footed. 27-13, Willis Wilson walking the sideline a bit, getting ready to get Jay Sean Talton Thomas back on. He's going to shoot, pulls the jumper. Nicely done, Jalen White in the face of game and tried to break him down with the dribble. Got him to step back just a hair, freed up the jumper. Pleasant. Sends it over to the wing. Still a 12-point deficit. Islanders need to get some stops. Miller hands off. And Lennox off the handle. So they do get the stop they were hoping for. Jay Sean Dalton Thomas to check back on as they'll come in for Peyton Smith. Nine forty-eight remaining. Thank you again to all of our great partners, HEB, the Country Inn and Suites in Fairfield, and Suites at Moore Plaza, Evans Glass Service, Chris Six Communications, The Waves Resort, Dave & Buster's Network Cabling Services, and AEP Texas. Proud partner of the Islanders. Jay Sean trying to spin, nothing there. Has to, has to give it up, cross court to White. Open for a three for a moment, decides against, pulls a mid-range jumper. And Jay Sean's going to be called for going up and over. Trying to rip right through Cameron. Tobias Cameron. Cameron with a nice box out. But for Jay Sean, just a little aggressive, trying to get beyond him. Tobias Cameron out of Australia. Six foot five sophomore. Averaging less than two points per contest, but effective there. Cameron. Has just shot a lot of free throws this season, but he's six of seven. Rims in the first. It was a one and one situation as that was the eighth team foul. 
So Cameron pushes it back to a 13-point margin. Cole's going to return as well as Simmons, so they bring in two new bigs as Pleasant and Gaiman check out. A little musical chairs about who's going to be in the low post for the Wildcats. Settle on Ricks and Simmons. Cameron, second free throw good. Eight of nine on the year. Got to be careful, nothing casual, no casual passing. You saw Miller kind of sneaking in to the play. Jalen White, nothing there yet. And there's going to be a foul this time on him on Cameron as he had the trouble keeping up this time on the right-handed move by Jayshon Talton Thomas. That is the first on Cameron and six team foul. So it'll be Bertain to check in. I think for Jalen White is who I think he's going to come for. That is the case. Islanders need, Islanders need some offense here in this next nine minutes. They find Miles Smith. Oh, loses it, kicks it through. Who's got it? Miles Smith does. Did he get the timeout? No, he finally. Jay Sean did what he had to do at that point, not knowing if Miles was going to be able to find an outlet, calls the timeout. An awkward possession as the ball came free on his drive baseline. Somehow or another came back up with it. Question mark, did Abilene Christian ever take possession of the basketball? I'm not sure if they ever did. I believe it was just being batted around on the floor. So the shot clock does not change. It will remain at 12. Honor to basketball will be back next weekend at the American Bank Center as they participate in another Southland Conference doubleheader against the Lamar Cardinals. The women will take the court at 1 p.m., followed by the men at 3.30 that afternoon. Contact the Islander ticket office at 361-825-BALL. That's 361-825-2255. And you can check out the action on the video broadcast of the Islanders Digital Network, pr presented by AP Texas. And, of course, another great matchup here on KDF 47, according to the Chris Six Sports Production. 9.05 remains here in the first half. Islanders trail 29-15. Jave Lankins to inbound the basketball. Trying to get it to Miles Smith, they do. Miles with Miller wreaking a little havoc. Miles able to skip it back out to Jave Lampkins. Lampkins for three. It's good. So Jave Lampkins found the open space, and Miles Smith knew where to go. 29-18, need a stop. Need to get this back to single digits, hopefully before the next stoppage. Cole, oh, a, a late whistle on Elijah Schmidt. Said he got him on the way up. While Elijah Schmidt himself did not particularly care for the call, Willis Wilson saying, hey, you got him. Colton Cole back at the line. In too deep, the seven-footer. Can't allow him to get it that deep in the lane. First shot is good for Colton Cole. You want your big men to be good free throw shooters. He's over a 73% on the season. Rims out the second. 30 to 18, Islanders. With Miles Smith looking to get to the free throw line, but cut off by Miller. Hand off, Jay Sean Talton Thomas up against Simmons. Simmons did a nice job taking that away this time. Lampkin defended tightly by Ricks. Quickly back to Miles Smith with 10 seconds on the clock. Lob feed, Elijah Schmidt knocked away by Simmons on the help side. Could not secure it. Got to get two hands on the basketball. And Ricks is called for the travel. Thirty eighteen, eight thirteen remaining. Multiple, multiple, multiple. After the turnover. Cross court, Bertain. Bertain for three. Hits the deck. Got to get up quickly. Ricks in transition. Picked up. Wants to go into the lane now. Drop feed. Simmons easily done as somehow Miles Smith at the deck in traffic got tripped up and left Simmons wide open on the low box. Back to a 14-point lead, 32-18. Smith up against Miller, finds Jayshon. Across this time, Schmidt gets rid of it. Nice swing. They get the shot off Miles Smith. In and out on the three, though. 
Good extra pass, but could not convert. One of the problems I had against Stephen F. Austin is sometimes they were able to execute, find that extra, extra player. Nice block by Nolan Bertain out of play. Block or foul? They're going to call it on Jay Sean Talton Thomas. I thought the play was the block from behind by Bertain, but they say no. Jay Sean picks up number two. 32 to 18 the score. Wildcats lead your Islanders here at the American Bank Center. Stay with us more to come. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network, Power by AP Texas, and on KDF 47, a Chris Six Sports production. Islander basketball coming to you on KDF 47, a Chris Six Sports production, 32-18. The score, Islanders trail here in game two of our doubleheader. Islander women victorious at 1 o'clock today, a game you saw here on KDF 47 and on the Islander Digital Network. Quick update, Islander tennis, they're at the Bayou Team Invite in Lafayette, Louisiana. They fell to the host, the Raging Cajuns, yesterday but knocked off Northern Arizona this morning with a score of 4-1. to one. The Islanders host the HEB Tournament of Champions at the Thomas J. Henry Tennis Center and HEB Tennis Centers on Friday, February 21st and Saturday the 22nd. Check GoIslanders.com for team information, brackets, match times, and venues. They are going to put Peyton Ricks at the free throw line, the late whistle called against Jay Sean Talton Thomas, which is number two. Slides one in, 33, 18, six points. For Ricks, make it seven as he hits them both. Joe Pleasant, quick double, snap double. They get it to Jason Talton Thomas. He'll go as they, they kind of capitalize on the numbers. Nolan Bertain, little jump shot, nicely done as they broke through the transition. Bertain with that little rhythm dribble, knocking down the mid range. 34 to 20. Answering back quickly, in deep to Cole. Cole trying to back in, slips it through. It's going to go off of, they say, Miles Smith. Pleasant was slicing into the lane. Daniels is going to come back as well as Gaiman. Cole and Miller check out. They'll get it to the corner. Lennox, and he steps out of bounds. He just stumbled. He got himself, he got himself twisted and just kind of stumbled back across the sideline in front of the Islander bench. 6.53 remaining. Jay Sean Talton Thomas goes to Bertain. Lennox committed early, able to recover. Smith, a little blocked by Gaiman, but recovers. Plenty of time. Bertain for three, just off the mark. Long board goes to the Islanders. There's going to be a foul on Gaiman on the hold, and if that's the case, it should be free throws coming up for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Elijah Schmidt was on the screen and roll, and as he broke to the hole, Gaiman got caught. So it'll put Elijah shooting a one-and-one, one. front end so vitally important. Monitors are finally in the bonus. Wildcats are currently in the double bonus. Doesn't go. Tapped away by Bertain. Pleasant comes up with it. Missed opportunity. Daniels. Gaiman up faking. And they're going to get Miles Smith. 
Came up, got two hands up on him. That's going to be his second. Yep, got caught on the, on the head fake, and as he fell forward, both hands came up. You hear normally all the time from the bench about keeping those hands up, not on, up. Using your body, use your legs. Gaiman hits the first. For Gaiman, now with five. Misses the second, long board to Bertain. Quickly, they'll get it up the floor. Gaiman, nice overplay. Miles Smith sends it around to Jay Sean. Jay Sean for three. In and out. Tipped up, count it. Count it. On the tip in as he was cut out from underneath. So Elijah Smith with a three point play opportunity. The foul on Daniels, the small guard, kind of cutting him out. Daniels listed at five foot seven, 140 pounds. I watched Schmidt in the gym the other night make about 15 in a row. Just got to be comfortable. It is a rhythm thing. Hits it, down to 12, 35-23. Lennox defended by Bertain. Gaiman can't get the basketball. He'll get it to Ricks. Lampkin staying with him. Ricks, a little pullback. Has to give it up to Lennox. Lennox for three. Rebound, Miles Smith. Ricks got away with one as Bertain was screened off to the deck. Quickly on the swing. Jave Lampkins, floater, count it. Down to 10, five points for Lampkin. It's all about defense the rest of this half. 520, Pleasants is going to pull the trigger for three. That's no good. Long ball to uh, Miles Smith. So, for a and Corpus Christi, they got them to take the shot they wanted. For Miles, oh, the Islanders kind of quick in the offense. Jay Sean Talton Thomas, Ricks wants to push. Matter of fact, he wants to push a lot with his shoulder. Daniels, floater, won't go, tipped up. Bertain secures it. Perry Francois. A little confusion on the play call. Now in the works. Retain on the wing. Lob feed into Elijah Smith. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. That was a dangerous pass into traffic, but Elijah went and got it, which was important. He was fouled in the process, but that was a tough feed into the lane. Second foul on Gaiman. 437. Three subs coming on. Pleasant, Lennox, and Daniels checking out. Mason. Coming on as well as Cole and Miller. Jay Sean Talton Thomas going to check out with 4.37 remaining. Just shy of the media break. Jalen White returning. And Elijah Schmidt, who's one of two from the line, back with an opportunity. Rims out. These add up. 4.33. 35-25, but it doesn't matter what we have said before. I mean, we said it just a moment ago. It's about defensive defensive play the rest of this half. Miller, defended by Miles Smith. They're going to deep feed to Cole. Cole, knocked away. Who's got it? Loose ball. Bertain. Oh, Miller jumps in at the last moment to take it away. Gaiman up faking. They want to get it in deep to, to Cole. And a takeaway this time by Elijah Smith. Joe Golding beside himself. Miles Smith to the baseline, skips it across to Bertain, now to Jalen White. Jalen, he's got an offensive foul. He's just, he didn't hit him that hard, but he sold it that well, did Chad Gaiman. First foul on Jalen White, 35, 25, 346. As I said before though, this final stretch is going to be about defensive series, trimming this lead down and going into the locker room with a single uh, digit margin. If you can take the lead, strictly bonus. On under basketball, coming back in a moment on KDF 47, this Chris Six Sports production.
The Islanders trailed by 10 to the Wildcats of ACU here at the American Bank Center on this Saturday afternoon. Southland Conference basketball on the Islander Digital Network powered by AP Texas and on Chris Six on this Chris Six Sports production on KDF. 35-25. There. I can see a 10-point margin on the sheet as I look at it. Uh, points off of turnovers. Islanders with 10 turnovers, 10 points off of turnovers in favor of ACU. The Islanders have not been able to capitalize after the six ACU point at six ACU turnovers as they have zero points off. That's what ACU does all season long. As a team, really exceptional. On the turnovers, Javay Lampkins trailing Ricks. Lampkins trying to, have to kind of shadow him wherever he can go. Gaiman lobbing in deep. And Cole, wow, what a catch at the highest point. And then finger rolled it over the defender. 37-25, White will give it up to Peyton Smith, who's on for Miles Smith. Peyton sends it to Jalen White, a little dangerous feed. Nothing available yet. They need some help. They'll look inside. So a, a fortunate, fortunate deflection out of bounds. So the Islanders will inbound with 13 seconds remaining underneath their own bucket. Line set. Looking to free up Francois in the corner. They get it to him. Wants to go at Cole. And there's going to be a foul. Blocking foul as Gaiman got there late. And I think he was inside the arc. So I like what Perry did. Took it right at the seven-footer. And he wanted to flush it, but Gaiman got in underneath him. His third, though, so Gaiman's got a little bit of foul trouble. He's been effective with seven points here in the first half. So for Francois, needs to knock down some foul shots. Islanders are four of seven so far. Rims it in. Abilene Christian, 13 of 16, 16 attempts in the first half. Gaiman does check out. And they're going to bring back on Arion Simmons. Trying to cut it to 10. And as we said, let's play defense the rest of the way. Get some stops. Perry, nicely done. Pe two of two for Perry Francois. Had an opportunity to meet his mom on a little surprise visit from North Florida, from North Miami, excuse me. Miller across to Mason. Francois, nice challenge, but Mason high off the window. 39-27. Peyton Smith gives it up to Jalen White. Cross court, looks in deep now for Francois. Kind of waves off. He has to go with the left hand, not, not there. And then late foul on Colton Cole. So again, the, the play broke down. Francois tried to improvise at the last moment and did draw the contact off of Cole. So Francois, who scored two from the line a moment ago with another opportunity. Second foul on Cole. Foul trouble. Three on Gaiman. Two now on Cole. Two on Simmons and two on Mason. For the Islanders, foul trouble. Four players, actually five players with two, including Tony Lewis, Harrison, Francois, Miles Smith, and Jay Sean Talton Thomas. Perry knocking down the free throw. Long board, Nolan Bertain, nicely. Honors with an opportunity. White, high at the window, will it go? Tipped up, who's got it? Bertain once again. Loose ball, knocked out of bounds. It should be Honor ball. And the official on the, on the far side of the play, the near side to us, had the best angle and confirmed that, yes, it is Honor basketball. Peyton Smith picks up his dribble, sends it. They look in deep again to Francois. Wanted to go at Coleman, nice at Cole, nicely done with that left hand. Rolling back baseline, Perry Francois with now five. Under 10, it's a 39-30 game. Again, trying to play good defense. Ricks popping free. Lamp, uh, Lampkins got there in time. 
Simmons skips to the corner. Miller not looking to make the offensive move. In deep to Cole. He'll go left hand spinning baseline as well. So you did it to me, I'll do it to you. Casual pass. Got to be careful. Jalen White, it was knocked out of bounds. Ricks is one of the best in the business. Miles Smith, Jay Sean Talton Thomas to come back on with 127 remaining. Each with two personal fouls. So Jalen White checks out. Peyton and Javay Lampkins checks out. Bertain to come on. Well, Bertain, excuse me, inbounds the basketball. Jay Sean tried to drive on Simmons. Simmons did a nice job taking that passing, that driving lane away. Now going at him again. There he got all the way through him finally. Got into the lane and was able to make that little curl around Simmons. Puts it back to a nine-point contest, 41-32. Pleasant. Simmons calling for it. They get it in. Simmons will step back, a little jumper. And there's going to be a foul on the floor. They're going to call it on Francois against Pleasant. They're going to call it on Francois. That's going to be his third. It's going to bring Elijah Schmidt back on. a and Corpus Christi did their job to force the difficult shot. Willis Wilson still communicating. It's one of those things that when we, we talk about these, you, you can talk all day. That's never They're never going to change their call. You can just hope to get the next call. Official coming over to have a conversation. Simmons checks out. Hayden Howe's going to come on for the first time for Abilene Christian. Trey Lennox has also come back on. It's them both. 43-32, under a minute to go. And the shot clock never got reset properly, so they'll get that done. Actually, I think it got, I think it got set to 20 and not 30. Now they'll just bump it up to 27 seconds. Miles Smith sends it across. Peyton Smith, Hayden Howe with it. And Schmidt trying desperately. And does not get the end one, but gets the nice bucket on a power move. Elijah Schmidt forcing his way through. Well, again, they're going to go to Howell in the interior. He'll skip it out. Lennox in deep to Pleasant. Second leading score on the team, Joe Pleasant. He'll have to give it up. Buck up top to Howell. They want Pleasant. They can't get it to him as of yet. Lennox steps to the free throw line. Howell with the little step through. 45-34, they've got 15 seconds on the clock. Do the Islanders. Bertain, skip across. They'll get it to Miles Smith. He needs to get the shot off. Jay Sean Talton Thomas with the left hand. It's no good, the Islanders could not get the best shot possible up. They end up having to go to the left hand floater. The score at the break, 45-34. The Wildcats by 11 over your Islanders here at the American Bank Center. As we said, game two of this Islander doubleheader. We'll be coming back in a moment. HEB halftime statistics. We've got a halftime interview with Islander legend Joe Kilgore is going to join us. We'll bring you up to speed on what's going on with Islander sports and what's going on around the South. And all of these things happening in our halftime coming your way. 45-34, the score. Wildcats by 11. Stay with us. More to come. Islander basketball returns on this KDF. 47 Chris Six Sports Production. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Islander Basketball here on the Islander Digital Network, powered by AP Texas, and on KDF 47, this Chris Six Sports production. Islanders trail 45-34. Had a couple opportunities late in the half to try and whittle it down to deeper into single digits, but a foul here and there, a turnover, has kind of kept the Wildcats in that double-digit 11-point scenario as they lead 45-34. Get you some HEB halftime statistics. First four, Abilene Christian. Uh, with eight points, two scores, Colton Cole as well as Corian Mason with eight along the way. Seven points apiece, Joe Pleasance and Peyton Ricks. Two rebounds apiece, so not a whole lot on the glass for the Wildcats. Two boards for Simmons, Arian Simmons and Joe Pleasant. Simmons all on the defensive glass for Pleasant. One offensive, one defensive. They have 11 total rebounds. Six assists, two to the team leader, uh, Chad, uh, excuse me, Clay Gaiman. Six turnovers. Two to the team leader, Colton Cole. The six steals as well. This is where they're exceptional. They're one of the best in the business. A couple steals apiece, Peyton Ricks and Corian Mason. Only one block shot that goes to Clay Game, and They shot 60, excuse me, 68% from the field. 11 of 17. That's, or excuse me, 15 of 22. That's big time numbers. And also got to the free throw line extensively. 15 of 18, 83%. Well, that tells you a whole lot about the first half. Now, for the Islanders, there are five players with five points apiece to lead the way, including Perry Francois, Jordan Hairston, Miles Smith, Iggy Hunt, and Elijah Schmidt. So they got a lot of balance, but they got to whittle this even deeper. Uh, five rebounds for Noah, uh, for Nolan Bertain to lead the Islanders, two offensive, three defensive. On the assist, two apiece for Peyton Smith and Jay Sean Talton Thomas. Uh, only two steals thus far. Both belong to Elijah Schmidt. No blocks credited. AM Corpus Christi shooting 46% from the floor, 12 of 26, 30% from the arc, 3 of 10, and from the foul line, 7 of 11. Our HEB halftime stats. HEB now with curbside and delivery service. Check HEB.com for more details. We'll take a quick break. The score once again 45 34. The Islanders trail the Wildcats of Adeline Christian on this KDF 47 Chris 6 Sports production. When we come back, Joe Kilgore, former Islander, to join us here courtside. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Islander Basketball. We're at the half. The score 45-34. Islanders share the Wildcats of Abilene Christian. Game two of our Islander doubleheader. Tell you more about game one in just a few moments. But right now we're joined by kind of one of those Islander legends. Got his face on the wall in a couple places on campus. Joe Kilgore joins us. A couple years removed from his playing days here on the island, but still continuing to pursue the game of basketball. And I think recently you said that uh, you're about to go back on the road again. Where, where's the next stop for Joe Kilgore's professional career? Dominican Republic, next stop. I'm going to do this for you here. Sorry about that. Go okay, ahead. I'm sorry. Dominican Republic is my next stop uh, towards the end of this month. Tell me about it. What, what do you uh, 
you know, what's uh, the plan? What have you heard about uh, the Dominican? I know that we had a former Islander, Justin Reynolds, recently play out there, and I think he had a good experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I follow him on Instagram, so I reached out to him. He said it's a nice place, you know, and the coaches, they really, they really like to play up and down. So I'm looking forward to getting out there and using my athleticism. Where do you keep the belt? Where do you keep the belt, Joe? I keep it put up now. I, <laughs> I, I use it too much when I got you it. You used to now. walk around campus wearing the belt, Joe. I, I, a little bit, a little bit here and there, but I keep it put up now. And, of course, if you don't know what I'm talking about, when Joe won the NCAA slam dunk competition, you know, won the championship belt. Yeah. Did you wear it to graduation? No, no, not to graduation. I thought you were going to wear it it's, around it's the road. Little, it's a little heavy, so, you know, I can't just be tugging it around everywhere. Well, uh, you know, tell us about after college. Of course, there's the perils of – playing professionally, opportunities, finding where they may be, but also at the same time, you know, if you're not playing basketball, there's still other things you have to pursue. That's what you got your education for, to try and pursue some other op options. What have, what have all of you been doing? Uh, so besides basketball, I, you know, I got my, uh, my business degree, so I've just been working with a couple friends trying to get into some marketing things. You know, my I have a friend that's working on a, a portable basketball machine. Okay. Know, so it fit in a duffel bag, and, and when you unfold it, it rebounds for you. Oh, that's great. So, so I've been working with him trying to market and help him get it out there. Without a doubt. that you know, And it's something that you know about, something you're passionate about already, yeah. so that kind of makes it a little bit right, easier yeah, to market. Yeah, right in the market. basketball field. So, you know. You've been keeping up with the, with the team? Yeah, I, I keep up with it a, a little bit. A little, little communication phone calls here and there. Is there anybody in particular Coach that Johnson. you reach out or uh, yeah, with Coach Johnson? Yeah, usually Coach Johnson. I talked to uh, Jason a few times, but me and Coach Johnson mostly keep in touch. Any advice? Defense, you know. <laughs> defense, 34 points in one half, not too bad, but you can't give up 45. So no. defense would be probably where I would, I would talk to him. No, without a doubt, 45 is definitely over the mark that we've set the standard for for ourselves. I mean, for Andy Corpus Christi, they're a really sound defensive team, keeping points down. Uh, but Wildcats shot 68% from the floor. Yeah. You know, and uh, we got the big thing is getting stops and stringing stops together. Getting about two, three, or four in a row, that can change the whole momentum of a game. Yeah, yeah, they need to uh, shrink the floor because they've really been going inside a lot. A lot of their buckets been in the paint, you know. they jumping at a lot of pump fakes and letting them get to the rim too easy. So if they stay in front of them, make them shoot from the outside and rebound, I think they'll get a, a few more stops this half. Well, we appreciate when you come into town. Homecoming's coming on the 29th. You might be on the road and living living in the DR at that time. But if not, yeah. we hope you get a chance to see you here if you're in the, if you're uh, in the Texas area. Yeah, if I'm in Texas, I'd definitely be here. But if not, you know, I'm going to uh, keep in touch and, and reach out to the uh, fellas before the game. I appreciate it, Joe. Thank you. Joe Kilgore once again stopping by. We'll take one more break, come back, bring up to speed on some things going on with the Islanders programs across the board. All that's coming your way in a moment here on KDF 47. Uh, this Chris Six Sports production on the Honor Digital Network powered by AP Texas. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Islander Basketball once again at the half. Getting ready for the second half to get underway. Your Islanders trail 45-34 to Abilene Christian. Game two of our doubleheader. Game one saw the Islander women prevail, winning 68-59 over the Wildcats. Solid effort, really strong game. Start to finish for Andrew Corpus Christi. Four players in double figures, including 16 from Alexis Bryant. She led the way. It was a big win for them as they continue to try and work their way to the top of the Southland Conference. After their loss to Stephen F. Austin on Wednesday, this was a great bounce back against one of the top teams in the league. So congratulations to Roy Chadwick and his squad. Uh, also, I mentioned earlier, Islander Tennis, winners this morning over Northern Arizona, 4-1. Islander Women's Tennis, uh, they're off to a strong start. They'll take the court on February 18th against UTSA. Uh, Islander Golf had a seventh place finish at the Texas State Invitational. Also, They'll be playing the Islander Classic coming up on Monday the 24th through the 25th at the Corpus Christi Country Club. Islander Golf, check that out. Islander Softball, big day today. Two wins at the University of Houston Tournament. They won 5-1 to one over Louisiana Monroe, the team they lost to yesterday, but they beat them this morning and then turned around with a 3-0 to zero victory over South Dakota State. So congratulations to Coach Kristen Zaleski. Got her team doing some good things. Uh, the Claiborne Bank College Classic, Honor Baseball, that's right around the corner. Honor Baseball will host Kansas State, though, Thursday at 6.30 at the Chapman, at Chapman Field on campus. So come out and be a part of that. And speaking of Honor Baseball, they're in the bottom of the eighth at UT Arlington in their opening weekend. Game two, they trail in that contest four to one. Hopefully turn things around. As again, our Islander scoreboard. Let's get back to the action here on the floor as Abilene Christian has the basketball to start things off. Miller going back to her cut. Gets by Harrison, took a feed on a play right out of the gate. Trying to get a call off of Harrison. He held up, did not, because he's already playing with two. Miles Smith gives it up to Bertain and deep to Francois. Francois feels the heat of a double. They give it up. Ricks had an opportunity if he would have jumped a little bit more aggressively into the passing lane. Miles Smith, little floater into the lane, off the mark. Had a good look somehow. That little floater that we're so accustomed to seeing from Miles, just a little bit deep, found the back iron, rimmed his way out on top, Pleasant. Pleasant's going to go right wing. And it's going to be, oh, they're going to just say a kick. So shot clock will reset itself to 20. And Miller for the Wildcats on the far side of the floor. One again, the Wildcats in their road purple. In front of their home bench, gives it up to Mason. Ricks, deep three ball. Well short, but Simmons is right there. Part of that play design is not just to get the three-point shooter open, but to get the rebounders in position. Can't swing it as they were looking to get it to Perry Francois, but the defensive hands took away the pass. Jay Sean up against Simmons. He's going to pull the trigger, the jumper up. It's good. Trying to get Simmons on his heels. Did so that time, was able to free it up. Simmons at 265 pounds. He is a bull in the post. Miller up faking. They want to go high-low. They get it to Pleasant. Pleasant with the jump hook. Gets a, 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 just a friendly bounce on that Islander rim. The Islanders need a little help on the inbound as everybody kind of ran away for a moment. 51-36. Abilene Christian kind of picking up where they left off. Jay Sean Talton Thomas just deciding, if you're going to put Simmons on me, I'm going to take him off the dribble. This time, Jay Sean, who had kind of a tough start, heard him complaining that he just couldn't get his legs going. He didn't, couldn't feel warm for some reason. Seems to be all right right now, especially in those final, these last two uh, offensive possessions. Ricks trying to back in, turnaround jumper. Boy, that is we're just getting some soft rims. Simmons kind of coming up. A little bit lame, but seems to be okay. Up the floor, official stop just for the moment. They're gonna bring on Cole to replace Simmons to give him a look at by the trainer. But Ricks took advantage of those really soft, comfortable rims here at the American Bank Center. Back to 15, 53-38. Pleasant now on the assignment on Jay Sean Talton Thomas. A little bit of a different look, but Jay Sean's going to go ahead, launch again. He's feeling it right now. Back to back to back possessions for Jay Sean Talton Thomas. Up on Pleasant, kind of invigorated. 
Pleasant wants to drive. Going to kick wide. Mason thought yep. about the drive, but yep. nice help. Yep. And Pleasant turned inside, got the defender to commit, then wheeled back to the to the to the uh, baseline for the finish. Jay Sean, as I said, feeling it this time short as he was on a heat check right there. 55-40. The largest lead was 16, and there's going to be an offensive foul on Ricks. Is Jordan Hairston anticipating Ricks coming back to the basketball? Gets the call away from the away from the uh, the basketball, so that is only going to be his first. Little floor maintenance, making sure player safety first and foremost. Willis Wilson making it quite clear his thoughts. Kick to Bertain for three. That's good. Driving to the hole, kick into the corner. Bertain knocks down another. Comfortable catch and shoot. Bertain loving that opportunity. To Ricks, though. And again, somehow or another, he can hit four or five parts of the rim and it will fall. Miles Smith, and looking for the high screen. Cole stepping out, swing to retain in deep. Francois, and it's a no no foul on, on excuse me Mason as he came up underneath and dislodged. Mason, in deep to Cole, and there's going to be a travel on Cole. 15:47 on the clock. Stoppage on the floor here at the American Bank Center. 58:43. The Wildcats of Abilene Christian with the advantage over your Islanders. Here in the second half. Stay with us more to come. Honor basketball on the Honor Digital Network powered by AP Texas and on KDF 47. This Chris Six Sports production. Stay with us. Fifteen forty-seven remains here at the American Bank Center in game two of our Islander doubleheader. 58-43, the Wildcats off to a sound start here in the second half. They shot 68% in the second half. First half, they've improved upon it in the second. Now six of seven, 85.7%. And we saw these shots by Peyton Ricks. Drops him in with such a soft touch. They just land on the rim and find their way through. For the Islanders, not bad themselves, 66.7%, four of six. As far as shooting percentage, but again, being outscored 13-9 thus far here in the half. After the turnover against Colton Cole, Islanders will have it. Resetting the lineups, we got Jay Sean Talton, tied up, uh, uh, Talton Thomas, excuse me, Nolan Bertain, Miles Smith, Jordan Harrison, along with Eli Schmidt, who's come in during the break. Cole, Miller, Ricks, Gaiman. Nice skip, Miles Smith. Three ball in the corner, it's good. So we're going to have to knock down some threes to get our way back in, but some great looks to the corner, the extra pass, the reversal to the far side of the floor, all effective. Ricks. This time does not get the favorable bounce. Miles Smith slipping, though. No turnover, the turnover against Miles Smith. We saw earlier with Trey Lennox in front of the Islander bench kind of getting his heels caught, fell to the floor. This time it's Miles Smith doing so. After that big stop, that's, that's a little troublesome. 
Mason. Gaiman wanted it as he had Hairston. Gaiman doesn't go. Late whistle again. But Gaiman's going to the floor and a foul on Elijah Schmidt. Correction, it's going to be a Nolan Bertain, the second man in coming from the outside. Daniels returning. It's a 12-point contest, but Gaiman on a sound move. Tried to get to the far side of the rim, did Gaiman. Took the hit apparently from Bertain. Middle looking to check out, I believe, as he's having a conversation with Daniels. That is going to be the case, so Daniels returns. 13-point lead. We can knock down threes all we want on this end of the floor, but it's got to be the defensive end that's going to win this game for us. This team is way too warm right now, way too warm. We've got to find a way to slow them down. Jay Sean picks up his dribble, skip and just gaming. Right now, right now, just a, 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 some frustration on the Islander side. So a little bit of frustration as the plays are breaking down, improvising a bit, a deflection out of bounds. Fortunately, it will be Islanders basketball, but everybody's got to get on the same page. Officials are saying, I want all 10 of you to be sure, not just one of you, I want all 10 of you to make sure that this was a, a safe area. Hey, Cole, number 34, I don't think you checked. You need to get in there and check. And as a matter of fact, they're going to bring out a towel. Apparently it wasn't enough. But that's why they checked. Well, we have it. So while they're working on it, let me give you an update on the Southland Conference. Win earlier today. Lamar defeated Houston Baptist 79-69. Sam Houston State's up by 10 over Central Arkansas. That's in Huntsville with 15.34 to go. Nichols with an eight-point advantage over Southeast Louisiana. That's with 14 and a half remaining that at, at Nichols. And Northwestern State hosting McNeese. That's a tight one, 54-52. Northwestern State with a two-point advantage, 10 and a half remaining in Natchitoches. Reversal to Bertain. Daniels strips underneath. Got underneath him. Lob feed. Gaiman. Misses the mark, but Mason is there on the far side. They stop the shooter in transition, but the backside man able to convert. Jay Sean Talton Thomas with the floater, tipped out. It's going to be Ricks tapping it up the floor, finds Daniels, and it slows the transition. Lob feed to Gaiman. Clay Gaiman. Deflected, taken away. Nice job by Elijah Schmidt getting the deflection, leading to the turnover. Done it on one side, they need to do it on both. Schmidt calling for it. Cole just playing big in the lane. Nice bounce feed. Does he get it? No, he'll go to the free throw line though. Mouse Smith kind of got caught in the land of the trees. And was able to bounce feed it across the lane into the hands of Elijah Schmidt. Iggy Hunt to come on. 13-33. Joe Pleasant looking to come back on. The MVP today are probably the sweepers. Used to be when we had one sweeper on each side. Now we have two sweepers on each side, which is... An important improvement. In case you're checking. Elijah Schmidt on the miss. Cole and Gaiman's going to come out. Jay Sean Talton Thomas checking out. Iggy Hunt giving him the, uh, uh, the breather. And we're going to see Javay Lampkins come back as well. Likely for either Bertain or Hairston. Elijah Smith, one of two. 61-47. He'll come on for Miles Smith, so I was wrong on all accounts. 13-33 remaining. It'll be Daniels to bring it up. Jordan Hairston. Yep, 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 yep. 
Working it through the top, weaving back and forth. Watch for Ricks. Watch for Ricks to try and break himself free. Mason. And it goes off of Mason out of bounds. So nice play by Nolan Bertain. They were looking for Ricks in the right corner. But a deflection led to the turnover. 61-47. Skip to Iggy, left corner. Simmons is going to give him room. He's got it. Someone's got to come back and help, and it's going to be Elijah Schmidt. He'll bring it to the guard, Lampkins. Shot clock under 10. Lampkins, quick swing. Hairston trying to take Daniels off the dribble, up faking. Tries to create some space. It's going to come up short. Loose ball. Pleasant comes clean with it. Straight feed to Simmons. And they're going to call Schmidt. He brought the right arm down. Schmidt held his position even when Simmons tried to step through on the baseline, but then brought the arms downward. Kind of makes it easy for the official. That's the second foul on Elijah Schmidt. Miles Smith getting quick, uh, getting back up quickly to return. 61-47 for Deshaun also getting ready to come back on. For Simmons, he misses the mark. Simmons on the season, 62% on the day. 0 for 1. Second effort. One of two. Back to 15 points where it's hovered on many occasions. The Islanders have been able to get it down to 12, but not to, una, unable to get it under a double-digit margin. Miles Smith sends it back. Trying to do that screen and roll, but much more effective. Simmons. Stopping Iggy Hunt, who knocks down a jump shot. And there's going to be a foul where? On the floor. Who is it on? Are they going to call it on Simmons? I think the ball will stay here, as it will be against Abilene Christian. Shot will fall, and it'll be on under basketball. That is going to be the case on Pleasant, the personal. That's going to be his first. Ricks checks out. Lennox returns. But the shot counted for Urshad Hunt. They need to get it in. They'll loop it all the way to half court. Calling for the guard, Miles Smith, to come back. So this is a four, possibly five-point possession for the Islanders. Iggy Hunt looking to take Simmons. Tried to flip it out the window. Did not have a good look. That was not the shot he wanted to take. It kind of came out of his hand early as it slid to the left side. Was able to kind of disengage from Simmons, but got it up a little too quickly. We've seen him use his length, reaching on plays like that. This time he just did not get a good, clean look. Quickly out to Mason. Swing to Daniels. Daniels for three. That's no good. Elijah Schmidt can't get it to go and falls right into the hands of Simmons. Got to get some breaks. You got to secure those loose balls. Elijah Schmidt, this time able to get all the way through on the screen and roll. Good look, Miles Smith. ACU slow on the rotation. Lennox fortunate to not get a call on him for the three-point opportunity. 64-51. Ready, ready. Pleasant high screen. Daniels goes away from it, kick to the corner. They'll go back up to Mason. As I said, Lennox was the one who made a couple monster threes against the Islanders at Adeline Christian. Skip back. Simmons, he's going to shoot the three. He's made a couple. He's made a few this season, not this time. The Islanders get a nice stop. Miles Smith, he's going to be fouled by Daniels. So Miles applying some heat. That's going to be the fourth team foul on Daniels, I believe. That is going to be number two. 64-51, Islander ball on the baseline when we come back. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Islander basketball on the Islander Digital Network Power Bay, AP Texas, and on KDF 47, 64-51 the score. Stay with us, more to come.
64-51, 13-point lead for the Wildcats. At the break, it was 45-34. Honors are, have been outscored 19-17 here in the half. Can't play with them. Can't trade buckets the rest of the way. They've got to do some significant damage on the defensive side to slow down Abilene Christian and give themselves some chances. For the Islanders, they've knocked down five threes today. They're five of 13. They're going to probably need a few more before it's all said and done. Abilene Christian with only the one, but they've been so effective. Now 65% on the night, 61% here in the second half. The numbers did come down. They were shooting over 80% earlier. Jalen White checked into the game, I believe, for Elijah Schmidt. They'll get it to Iggy, quickly out to Jay Sean. And that was a scary pass. Looked like Daniels was in the play. Jalen White up against Pleasant. And Daniels, the double team coming in. You got to know it's coming. And you, you got to know it's coming. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Lampkins, let's watch the inbound man. He'll get it to Miles, under nine. And it's going to go on a turnover. It's going to be knocked. Oh, Jalen White was able to tap it off of Daniel's foot. So after Daniels had secured the basketball and the shot clock had changed over, White with a little tap knocked it out of his hands and off his toe. Lampkins will inbound from the side now. Far side, that is. And bodies hitting the deck, so they're having to do a lot of extra work. With the sweepers, keeping this one dry. Miles Smith. With the new shot clock, again, there was a full change of possession. Miles Smith, what, where is the call? It's going to be on. Did he use the arm? Did I, I, it, Unfortunately, it was behind the traffic. Couldn't see it, but they're going to call it on Miles Smith on the drive, possibly kind of clearing with his lead arm his path. So Perry Francois looks to come on. Colton Cole going to take the high feed, tip over. Can't get it to go. Jalen White with the rebound. So missed opportunity for the Wildcats. Cole with the bunny. White, quick swing to Miles Smith. Javay with Ricks on him. A little behind the back. Freed himself for the moment. Long board into the hands of Cole. Javay is a streak shooter. When he is, when he is on, when he is streaky, and he is feeling comfortable, you want him taking that shot. You want him on that step back. He made his first shot earlier. Cole throws it away. Are they going to say? No, they're not going to say it's off of Jayshon uh, Talton Thomas. Thought maybe that was the case. Jalen White's going to check out his pair of Francois. More traditional low post. Checks back in, 9.04 remaining. Willis Wilson getting in the ear of Jayshon Talton Thomas as he walks by. Kind of uh, while he's while he's calling the plays for the thing, he had special instructions for Jay Sean. Almost kind of set in the four corners. Now everybody in motion. Did he? It was deflected. No, they say it was not. Miles Smith, when he tried to gather it to pass it out, just mishandled the basketball. The turnover. For Miles, he's got. Hey, here we go, here we go, here we go. Having a tough day with five turnovers thus far today. Miles Smith up top. Joe Pleasant trying to free up Lennox. Can't get it. Lennox. Okay, someone's got to come back to the basketball. Finally, Daniels does for the Wildcats. They're at 10 seconds. Call for the head tap. ISO trying to go away from it. Kick to the corner, and it's going to go through the legs. It was not a good, not a good feed from Daniels as he threw it right at the shoe tops of Pleasant. And that's going to get Miller off the bench for. Head coach Joe Golding. Nolan Bertain's going to check in as well for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. For Bertain. One of three from deep. Two of four from the floor today for his five points. 
He'll come on for Iggy Hunt. We said it before the end of the half. We say it again. Offense is one thing, but this is going to be more about defensive stops the rest of the way. Jay Sean up against Lennox, and Lennox will be called for the personal. It will not be continuation. Shot does fall, but it was on the floor. 15 foul against Abilene Christian. First foul on Lennox, and Lennox is going to check out as they bring back on Corian Mason. Trying to free Bertain, nothing there yet. Skipping it all the way over, and Mason takes it away. And Jay Sean Talton Thomas is going to be called for the personal as they, as they threw it all the way. Abilene Christian anticipated. And Mason is going to the free throw line. 7.59 on the clock. 64-51, the foul on Jay Sean Talton Thomas, his third, team fourth. Stay with us, more to come. Islander basketball returns in a moment on the Islander Digital Network, Power Bay, AP Texas, and of course on KDF 47, this Chris Six Sports production. Stay with us. With 7.59 remaining, the Islanders still at bay. The Wildcats keeping them there, leading 64 to 51. The Islanders, again, shooting the ball in the second half fairly well. They're 7 of 13, 53%, but for Abilene Christian, they're 8 of 14, 57%. And hold on to that, do I have this correct? That 19, 17 point differential. If that was the case earlier, it was. Huh. So since the last break of the 10-29 mark, no one has scored, apparently, which I did not really catch on until right now because I'm looking at my, my score sheets just prior to the last one. It was the same exact score, same exact deficit. So I'm like, wait a minute. All right, the free throw from Mason, though, changes that. 65-51. Hits two. Again, got the steal as he anticipated that pass all the way to the backcourt from the inbounds. Got the steal, and Jay Sean Talton Thomas picked up the personal. Miles Smith swings it to Bertain. Lampkins can't get free of Miller. Picking up his dribble. Nothing there yet. They'll get it to Lampkins. Under 10. Lampkins defended by Miller. Good off the dribble to Jay Sean. Turn around at the free throw line. Cole will get the long rebound. Had some bodies around him. Went straight up. Just too deep. Miller swings it. Now Mason. Plus is not really looking to take that shot. Cole might. Doesn't go. Perry Francois with the rebound. Miles Smith got caught in the land of the trees. Got to do something with it. Got to get out. He does. Now Francois up against Cole. Blocked from behind by Miller, anticipating the play. The second man in, Miller, the point guard. Skip across to Miller. Miller 
Going to go ahead and float one himself. This one will not go. Miller gets his own board somehow. In the land of the trees, Miller sneaks his way all the way through. Up top. Down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Ricks, deep three. Won't go. Jay Sean with the good box out. Nolan Bertain. Oh, that one's over the top. And Bertain landed awkwardly. Landed awkwardly, and he's going to get some attention. Nolan, of course, who was sidelined earlier this year with an injury. He's slapping the floor, and I am hoping that this is not a return to the, it, the previous injury. 5.57. Well, he also suffered what appeared to be an injury against Vanderbilt. It's looking similar, but it was a cramp. This time he really seems to be putting more attention towards the knee. And Jerry Hooker, head athletic trainer for the Islanders, is there with him. Jordan Harrison, Elijah Schmidt, Iggy Hunt looking to come on. Gaiman and Simmons as well for... Abilene Christian. So Nolan Bertain, he's going to need some assistance. Lee Scott, the head strength conditioning coach, is going to help him. He was talking about he, he's going to try and step him forward. He said he couldn't do it. So Bertain getting help. Willis Wilson checking in as well. He'll get the attention on the sideline that he needs. And Ricks is at the line for the technical foul that I did not see. He is shooting two. And he is the king of the soft bounce. I'll need to get some clarification on what happened there. Apparently, a technical foul was called on Jay Sean Talton Thomas, which is now his fourth personal. Backdoor cut, but somehow Mason comes up with it, swinging it around. Ricks for three. In and out, rebound, Hairston. Quickly out to Lampkins. Ricks is waiting. They want to get it inside. Schmidt can't get by. Big Simmons. Floater, Hairston, high bouncer, it finds its way home. Hairston now with seven, had 17 on Wednesday night against Stephen F. Austin. Some early foul trouble tonight, though. Gaiman sends it across. Ricks wants to go baseline, taken away. Simmons on the quick swing. Mason. It'll penetrate, kick out. That's what they've been doing. It's going to be Miller for three. That's no good. And long board to Mason as the Islanders couldn't track it. Got to be first to the ball. Ricks up faking. Going to back it up, work some more clock. Ten seconds. Into Gaiman. Drop feed. Simmons blocked by Urshot Hunt. Loose ball. And guess what? The turnover. Tried to thread that into some traffic as Islanders wanted transition. But ACU getting a hand on it and keeping it on their side of the floor. It's going to be Miller. Up top through Ricks. Ricks. I tell you one thing, what Ricks did, instead of trying to go to the, to the right side of the rim, he cut right back into Iggy Hunt. He was under the bucket when he tried to make the shot. Four minutes remaining, the first on Iggy. 16 foul against the Islanders. 68-53 Wildcats maintaining their 15-point lead here at the American Bank Center this Saturday afternoon. Stay with us more to come. Islander basketball continues in a moment on, on this KDF 47 Chris Six Sports production. Stay with us.
With four minutes remaining, the Islanders trail 68-53 to Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian coming in again in third place in the Southern Conference, 9-4. Uh, Islanders tied for eighth. Lamar, who the Islanders are tied with, were victorious today over Houston Baptist. So if Aiden Corpus Christi were to take the loss, they would fall into ninth position in the Southland Conference standings. Speaking of Southland Conference, updating the scores. This one's about over in Natchitoches, McNeese. With six seconds remaining, trails 84-79. Southeast Louisiana uh, down almost 20 to Nichols with 3.38. Sam Houston State leading by 15 over Central Arkansas. That's with 3.37 remaining. And as we mentioned earlier, Lamar uh, winners over Houston Baptist. There's one more game tonight, 6 o'clock start in New Orleans, hosting the University of the Incarnate Word. Ricks with 17 points as he knocks down the free throw. I'll tell you one thing, I don't know if Ricks has done a He's had a swish tonight or not. Oh, the shooter has a bloody knee, so they're going to address that really quick. He did make the first free throw, but oh, this slap a bandage on him, get him rolling. University of the Incarnate Word. They came in. The, they're coming into tonight's game four and nine. Islanders and Lamar came in six and eight, just above. So with a 900 loss, and if University of Incarnate Word were with a win today, were to take down uh, Houston Baptist, no, excuse me, if they were to take down New Orleans, in New Orleans, go, go, go. they would inch too late, too late. within one game of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Can't say it. Can't say I've ever said it, but I'm rooting for the privateers. Miles Smith. Into Iggy Hunt against Gaiman. Iggy, loose ball, kicks it out. Miles Smith, nice blanket defense. Hairston for three, finds its way. Hairston, challenged the shot, but again, have you seen softer rims? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Softer rims, they have been special. Is this a full timeout? I believe it is. If that is the case, we're going to take the timeout as well. Honor basketball on the Honor Digital Network. They trail 69-56 to the Wildcats of Abilene Christian. Stay with us. More coming your way. With 3.29 remaining after the Islander timeout, 69-56 the score. It's going to take a furious comeback for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Abilene Christian has done a nice job of just kind of, as I said before, keeping the Islanders at bay. They led by 11 at the break. They've expanded it to 14, but they continue to keep the Islanders there right in that 12 to 15 point margin. Gaiman, Simmons, Mason, Miller, and Ricks for the Wildcats for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Jay Sean Talton Thomas, Thomas, excuse me, Miles Smith, Iggy Hunt, Elijah Smith, and Jalen White. Mason on the inbound, finds Miller. Miller loops it back across, and they'll get it back and forth as the two guards play a little keep away. Gaiman, trying to up fake Hunt, does. Jumper up and good. Again, trying to keep Hunt on his heels. Game and able to convert. Jalen White. Foul on the floor called on Mason. Jalen White 
when he makes a decision to go down the lane, you got to make a commitment to draw the charge. Because again, six foot five, 245 pounds. That's a lot coming at you. We'll address the floor one more time. We mentioned earlier the Islanders will have Wednesday off. The Islander men, the women on the road at Southeast Louisiana. The men will have Wednesday off and then return for the doubleheader against Lamar next Saturday. Excuse me. Is that correct? I believe so. No. Got to get who that team is. The Islanders next week. Yeah, they do. It's at Lamar, though. The doubleheader at Lamar next week. So if I misled you earlier that it was a home game, my apologies. It is the road game at Lamar next week. So I had the opponent right. I may have had the venue incorrect. So I promise you, if you had tried to call the Islander ticket office, they would not have sold you a ticket. Bertain comes back on, which is great to see. Apparently, maybe it was just a cramping in his leg. He did suffer that at, at Vanderbilt, a very similar thing where it looked like it was a knee injury, but it was a cramp. So it was, I mean, that's just that's great to see. Gaiman has to give it up. Nice job by Iggy in the low post. Gaiman now this time will give it up once again with eight seconds on the shot clock. Miller with an ISO. Nice step out, but stepping through is Miller. Floater, it's good as he split the double team as the Islanders came out. He got the floater to fall before the second man, Elijah Schmidt. Actually, the third man could make the play. Elijah Schmidt picks up a loose ball. Jalen White was trying to kick it to the corner, but the link caused the deflection. Elijah Schmidt, right place, right time. 73-59. Again, this game has been about trying to get stops, and for Andy Corpus Christi, they've just not been able to string together a series of stops that they've needed. Miller wasting time, as he should. Time is on his side. Miller high off the window. Iggy Hunt, who's been, who, who normally that's exactly what you expect for him to put that into the seats. Miller put it as high off the window as possible to avoid the shot blocker. Blocked by Gaiman from behind and a foul on Jay Sean as he grabs Miller. And for Jay Sean Talden Thomas, possibly frustration after the block on the reach. He's going to pick up his fifth personal foul and foul out of today's game. Jordan Hairston, Miles Smith looking to return. They're going to go ahead and bring on Perry Francois to be the fifth member onto the floor for the Islanders. There was some confusion just for a moment on the substitution because Jay Sean uh, left the floor quickly. And they substituted two others. So, yes, now the lineup is set with Smith, Schmidt, Francois, Bertain, and Harrison. For Miller, very effective in these final moments, hits the first free throw. That was only the seventh team foul with 136 remaining, so the fouls were less furious here in the second half. Miller going after it. I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, you want you don't want Miller to kind of lock up on Elijah Schmidt. He is triple quick. Gets it back to Miles. Miles on the face of game and has to give up the basketball. Francois caught down deep. He's finally hit on the way up by Gaiman. So a nice catch in traffic, staying with the play. Francois bided his time and is going to the line with 116 remaining. Fifth foul on Gaiman. He will check out. Pleasant steps on, and Jalen White's going to come back on for Andy Corpus Christi as well. Four-year-olders, number 10, Aaron Francois, shooting two. 
Perry Francois. For Perry. 70% of the season, missed the mark there. For Francois, three of four from the line today. High Arca, that's a little deep. You can see just one of those things where you try and compensate. You came up short in the first, and you compensate in the second. 105 remaining. 76-59, Ricks is just going to bide his time. Here comes the help, and Ricks loses it out of bounds. So, Miles Smith made the sprint to double. Ricks trying to react to it, stumbled actually, and it went out of play. So the turnover gives the Islanders back the basketball with less than a minute to go, 59.2 to be precise. Thank you again to AP Texas, HEB, Chris X Communications, Evans Glass Service, The Waves Resort, Dave & Buster's, the Fairfield Inn & Suites and & Country Inn & Suites, and Network Cabling Services being our great proud partners. Jordan Harrison is going to go to the free throw line. As he got there quickly. Simmons wasn't ready for him, so Harrison will go to the free throw line to shoot two. He's got ten today. Foul is going to be on Simmons. That's going to be his third. And Jalen White, they're going to, they're going to come. I think they're going to go ahead and set him back down. He was making his move towards press row. Wow. That soft trim has been nice to Ricks all day, but for some reason it's, it's been a little challenging to the Islanders. Rain and Corpus Christi, 9 of 18 from the free throw line. It's the second. White will come on for Francois. On the inbound, caught, and he's going to be out of bounds. So did AM Corpus Christi force the turnover? They did. 76 60 is Macing kind of got caught on a hop. On White. Gets it quickly to Smith. Immediately goes for the high screen. He's going to pull the trigger. Deep three. Off the mark. Long rebound. Peyton Ricks. Ricks finds the man in the middle and. It'll allow them to walk over the timeline. And there's going to be a foul on Hairston as he just got up a little tight, got him with a body push, 31 seconds remaining in a timeout Wildcats. 76-60, this one appears to be in control. We're going to stay here through this stop. It's just 30-second timeout. It appears that the Wildcats are going to prevail today. And as we said, move to 10-4 and four in league play. They were sitting in third place behind Nichols and Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin, if I'm not mistaken, has the, the weekend off, that being the case. And for Nichols, uh, with their probable win coming in, they got about two minutes to go in that one, leading by 16 over Southeastern. They should hold their position. Top three should not change. Sam Houston State also uh, leading significantly with 35 seconds remaining. They should hold on to their fourth position. Northwestern State, their winners today as well. So the top five not changing. Central Arkansas took the loss. And with McNeese losing as well, really did not change too much as, at, at all in this lineup. Quickly out. Hairston, little... Little Euro around the defender. Gets it to go. He's got 13. And a quick foul called on Hairston on the inbound. But as I was saying, with McNeese losing and Lamar winning today, that will put Lamar, I believe, a half game behind McNeese. So the position will stay on the standings as is. Corian Mason at the line, leading by 14, 13 seconds remaining, 76-62. Howe looks to return. Hits the first, Mason. For Mason, perfect five of five from the line today. His 13 points.
and in Corpus Christi. 18 turnovers compared to 15. Rabbling Christian. The Islanders just unable to whittle into that second half deficit. Miles Smith, little fade away is good. Five oh. seconds remaining. Miles now with 10. Defense is called off. Shot clock is going to wind itself out, and this one is over. 78-64, Abilene Christian with the sweep of your Islanders here this season. Defeated them back in January. And now take the win here at the American Bank Center today. And as we said, will maintain their third place position in the Southland Conference standings. Willis Wilson will be stepping over in just a moment to join us. Get his immediate thoughts. Then we'll take the break, go into our post game, be joined by Marty Gross, associate head coach, a little bit more in-depth look at today's game. We'll update once again some of the results of the day. And then set you free. Willis Wilson is coming over as we speak. Appreciate him doing so. Uh, coach, it, it just didn't seem like we could get a series of defensive stops when we need them in the second half. They kind of kept us sure at bay didn't. like 11 to 15. They kept us in that, that pocket the whole time. You know, they really did, and uh, there's not a lot of ex explanation for it other than we just didn't have our feet moving the way we needed to. I mean, everything that they came in to do in their game plan has, was covered. We worked on it yesterday in practice. We talked about it today at shoot-around. You know, it really felt like our guys were engaged and ready to go, but uh, they just came out and kept doing what they did. I, I was really disappointed early on, just the, the, the lunging and gambling and and uh, just getting out of place. We just did not have our mind where it needed to be. I mean, we're a team that takes a lot of pride in our defense, and our defense just wasn't there today. We didn't play the gaps very well. We, we weren't very good at that at point of attack, and we didn't pressure the, the post feeds, and those were things that uh, – Again, we covered pretty thoroughly in our in our scouting report. Yeah, they, they're they're a difficult matchup. There's no doubt about it. They got the shooters. They have they 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 can come at you from different angles. They got drivers. They got shooters, and their bigs are vastly improved from the year ago. Very much so. Very much so. A couple couple guys that have kind of stepped up to the plate, but nonetheless, it kind of felt like we we contributed to their success. And you can't take anything away from them. Without they, a doubt, they they played extremely hard and they did a nice job. Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you. Willis Wilson stopping by. We'll take a quick break. Come back in just a moment with our Islanders postgame show. Marty Gross will join us. And we'll, again, check in on the Southland Conference and Islanders scoring and other sports today as well. That's coming your way in just a moment. 7-8-64, the final Islanders fall to the Wildcats of Abilene Christian. Stay with us more to come.
We're in the post game. The final score, 78-64. The Wildcats of Abilene Christian hold off the Islanders in the second half. And uh, they did a nice job. And as Coach Willis Wilson pointed out, I mean, just we were unable to really put together the defensive pressure necessary to, to take down one of the top teams in the Southland today. And to talk more about it with us is Associated Coach Marty Gross. Um, I mean, like I said, credit where credit's due. They did a nice job, and we didn't make the stops we needed when we had no, the champ and, opportunity. And, and we, we going in needed to defend – without fouling and because um, they hurt us doing that up there and they did it again tonight. I mean, we just, we, we could not get stops without fouling and we put them at the line. They scored, I want to say up there, scored 25 points from the line and tonight, same thing or this afternoon, uh, they scored 25. They sure did. So, you know, we, we've got to figure out a way to defend without, uh, without fouling. You can't guard them at the line and they shoot free throws well. They're 25 for 32 and uh, we did not shoot free throws well tonight. We were 10 for 19. So, um, and it's one of those games. That in 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 I, we we talk about it, and everybody says, "Oh, you got to make your free throws." But it's not a cliche statement uh, because those nine free throws missed tightened this up to a five-point game. And when those free right. throws are made, it just kind of changes. It changes, it the, changes complexion the, the complexion of the Without game. Without a doubt, and 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 we just you know we got to keep them off the line. We've got to guard without fouling and. Um, and I thought they, they beat us to some loose balls again, uh, as they did in Abilene, just like uh, kind of an air ball, one that, you know, it brushes against the rim and they just, they come up with it under the goal, and lay it in, you know. Um, I thought, you know, to open the game, uh, you know, Jordan tries to save the ball under uh, their goal and they pick it up and lay it in. Um, and that's just, that just wasn't, uh, you, you don't want that to start the game. No, not at all. And, of course, the other one that really stands out to me is uh, the inbound play from the baseline throwing into the backcourt. And yeah. they, they had it read. Tony it was Mason steals it and, and, his name is Colton. and scores uh, or gets fouled. And, uh, you know, those are the kind of plays that they have made against us and other teams. They're a good team. Without a doubt. You know, but, uh, you know, we've got, to, we've got to play better defensively. We've got to defend without, uh, uh, without fouling. And uh, I thought we did a good job in terms of defensive transition. We were, we were better on the glass tonight than we were there. Um, we got off to a better start, although it wasn't a great start. We got off to a better start than up there. So, I mean, we did, we did some things that. Were you satisfied with, like, the paint touches and stuff? Like, no, no, the, no, no, no. They, they, uh, they beat us on paint touches again. Um, you know, they, they scored 44 points to our 22 points in the paint and uh that's they they you know uh cole 34 32 pleasant uh and gaiman who's really come on of late gaiman is, he, didn't he had play a really nice game up. yeah he didn't play much in the game up there um but tonight he, he showed, started he showed a lot and and he hurt us uh you know he gave them uh, a big time lift for sure uh without a doubt now as you said we have the wednesday off you know, and then we prepare. We go back on the road to play at Lamar. Now, we've defeated Lamar once already this year. Right. But, like, going on to the Montaigne Center, it's a different animal right. entirely. Yeah. We're they were victorious today in, in, in their facility. So, so yeah, we're going to have to just uh, we'll have to get ready to play or get, we'll be ready and, and uh, you know, get ready to play a, a good Lamar team. Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you. Marty Gross stopping by. So she did, Coach Onander men's basketball. Let's get you the final stats brought to you by HEB. Uh, first for Abilene Christian, leading the way with 17 points was Peyton Ricks, four of nine from the field, one of five from the arc, a low number for him, but it was eight of nine from the free throw line, 14 for Corian Mason, and 11 for Joe Pleasant, uh, three players in double figures. Leading rebounder with five was Arion Simmons coming off the bench, four players with four boards apiece. Uh, Ten assists on the night for the team, two for Clay Gaiman, and the other eight, one apiece for separate players. That's getting everybody involved. 15 turnovers, three to Peyton Ricks, 12 steals, four to Ricks, four to Mason, and the three blocks, two to the team leader, Clay Gaiman. They shot 56% from the floor on the night. That, as you've heard the coaches say, that's just not really acceptable, uh, 26 of 46. But only one of 13 from the three-point line, which is kind of interesting, 7%. From the free throw line, 78%, 25 of 32. 25 points from the line. Yeah, that, that makes that makes your life difficult. For the Islanders, leading the way with 13 was Jordan Hairston, the freshman. Uh, second game in a row, leading the way. Five of eight from the field, two of three from the arc, one of two from the line, and 10 points for Miles Smith. 
Uh, he was four of eight from the floor, two of four from downtown. Uh, nine points. Jay Sean Talton Thomas uh, rounding out the top three. 26 rebounds, two less than their opponent. Leading rebounder was Miles Smith with six. One offensive, five defensive. Two players with five apiece. That was Talton and Bertain. 11 assists, three to the team leaders, Smith and Talton. 18 turnovers, six to Miles Smith. A tough night for Miles. Uh, three steals, all belonging to Elijah Schmidt in the one block. Uh, credited to Iggy Hunt. 49% shooting on the night, 24 of 49, 37% from the free from the three-point line, 6 of 16 from the foul line. That's a bad number, 52%, 10 of 19. Those nine do add up. Thank you again, HEB. Now with curbside and delivery service, check HEB.com for all the details. They are special people. We can't thank them enough. Uh, we do a final Islander baseball fell in game two of their weekend series with UT Arlington. They'll play tomorrow, I believe, 1 o'clock start time. The final today, though, 4-1 in that contest. Uh, Islander softball will take on McNeese tomorrow. Uh, check GoIslanders.com for more times and details, but they were winners today, winning two against Louisiana Monroe and San Diego State. Uh, Islander tennis victorious over Northern Arizona. And don't have updates from today's track events, but cr uh, congratulations to Isaac Vargas winning the 5,000 meters at the Texas Tech shootout uh, for Islander track and field. Second place, Islander finisher. I do not have it in front of me, so I apologize for that. But uh, strong efforts from the Islander uh, long distance performers. The final score once again here, 78-64. Uh, your Islanders fall to the Wildcats. want to thank everybody here uh, at uh, Press Row here in the American Bank Center, Marshall Fay, Communications Director for Texas A&M University Corpus Christi, the crew from the Islanders Digital Network, and of course from Chris Six Productions, and most importantly, want to thank you for joining us. I'm Stephen King, the final again. 78-64, Islanders fall to the Wildcats. Have a great rest of your evening.